the good luck, the hyena, trusty, mild-mannered, the spider, the unbreakable, and finally, the untethered. These are all titles carried by a man who has followed us across various From Software worlds. We tend to meet him in areas where traps have been set for those foolish enough to fall into them. He shows a great amount of disdain for those associated with religions or churches, taking offense to their pompous, holier-than-thou mentalities. No matter what world he inhabits, this bias comes with him, perhaps because he's seen how religious dogma has destroyed so many lands. This man's name is Patches and he's a mainstay of From Software games that can be traced back to Armored Core. While there is a popular theory that every iteration of patches we encounter in FromSoft is the same person, we believe each version has their own story to tell. For our 100th episode of Elden Lore, we'll be discussing every iteration of patches, their stories, and the motivations of this enigma of a character. Welcome to the 100th episode of our Elden Lore series. We cannot believe we've made it to 100 lore dives, and it would not have been possible without the constant support of our audience. If this is your first time finding the channel, thank you for checking out our content. Our playlist is expansive at this point, so no matter what you're looking for, you'll probably find it there. If you like our content, please consider subscribing so we can continue to grow this incredible audience. You can also join our Discord to connect with other FromSoft fans. Thank you again for helping us reach this incredible milestone. Now let's get back to the stories at hand. There is some debate over which instance of Patches truly came first. Most believe that Patch the Good Luck should be considered his original appearance, as he's the first to take on the name, and does share some characteristics with future incarnations of the character. But YouTuber Blingy makes a strong case for the original patches, coming from an old, Japan-only, PS2-era FromSoft game, called Shadow Tower Abyss. This character has no name, but certainly indulges in some patches-style trickery, including an exploding chest and dropping us into a pit. I won't go into too much detail on this possible version of patches, as you'd be better served by checking out Blingy's video which I'll be linking in the cards and the description. Suffice to say, there's a good argument to be made for this random human essentially being a proto-Patches. Next, we have Patch the Good Luck, a Lynx that first appeared in Armored Core for answer. This enemy's next is called No Count, and his emblem is a dice with bullet holes, turning each side into a six, a clear indication of how Patch creates his own good luck. When fighting in his mission, we can see the classic Patch's cowardice on full display, as if you focus on destroying his allies, you can actually make him surrender without finishing the fight. Take out his entourage, and Patch will stop fighting altogether and say, Wait, wait, I give up. Hey, I'm just following orders here. If he's pulled out, why should I... You guys, you're alive, right? This is no count, come in. We're allies, right? Right? If you then wait without attacking, Patch will leave on his own, and the mission will be complete. An important note on this dialogue, though, as it seems what we got in the US version of 4 Answer may be a gross mistranslation. According to the Armored Core wiki, the line, You guys, you're still alive, right? This is no count, come in, was likely intended to be, I might have fought you, but you didn't die, so it doesn't count. This sheds light on the name No Count, as he doesn't consider his losses fair, meaning from his perspective, he always has good luck. This is also our first instance of a classic Patch's surrender, smooth talking his way out of taking responsibility for his actions and playing on our sympathies to get away unscathed. The version of the character we meet in Demon Souls goes by Patch's the Hyena and can be encountered in multiple locations. Most players are likely to meet him for the first time in the Armor Spider Archstone, where he waits for travelers to fall into his trap. You're not mad like the rest, are you? Wow, what jolly travelling companions are we, <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Call me Patches. Oh, see that treasure over there? Go on and take it. 
my gift to you. Just to show that we're friends. Whew, I'm glad to meet you. These soul-starved imbeciles will drive you mad. You can then take the treasure Patches was so generously pointing you towards, and a bear bug will descend on you. <laughs> you? You're no joke, are you? Worry not. The treasure is all yours. Tough luck with the bear bugs, but you certainly showed them, didn't you? Here it is. Kept it safe for you. Go on. Take it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> you are simply unlucky. Worry not. Stay by me, and my luck will rub off on you soon enough. Even though Patches is not going by the moniker The Good Luck, it seems this aspect of the character is alive and well, as he considers himself lucky by way of creating misfortune for others he can profit on. At this point, we can reasonably assume Patches just didn't know about the bugbear. After all, what if this was just an innocent mistake? If you found yourself fooled by this charming smooth talker, your next encounter with him won't leave any doubt in your mind as to his true intentions. When visiting the Shrine of Storms, we can find Patches again, standing over a small pit. When speaking with him, you'll find him in a jovial mood at the prospect of new treasures. Hello again. Hey, don't turn a cold shoulder. I didn't mean to do you wrong, really. Come on now. We've got better things to fret about. That pit there is filled with treasure. But uh, I'm having a little trouble getting to it myself. Uh, go on, take a look. There are more riches than you could dream of. <laughs> what can it hurt to look at this treasure? Hey, hey! Don't hold it against me, eh? Take your time starving to death. Then I'll sell every last trinket off your corpse. <laughs> Again, Patches gets one over on us, but if we escape the pit, he's all smiles. Y you uh, Hey, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean what I said. Well, a, a man's got to make a living, right? Here, look, I can make up for it. There aren't many humans like us. We need to stick together. I know. I have this as a token of my friendship. Not bad, right? <laughs> Come on. Let's be friends. What do you say? No need to drag each other down. From this point on, we seem to have earned Patch's respect, at least to some degree because he will become a merchant in the Nexus, selling us various items and feeding us intel about the world. It's at this point we can actually get a little more characterization around Patches the Hyena. He seems to have a distaste for clergymen, which is more prevalent in his later iterations. He seems upset that St. Urbane does not forgive him for kicking him into the pit as well, and makes a point of saying, praying never put food in his mouth or anyone else's. He also warns us of Yurt, and gives us a tip on finding the Moonlight Greatsword in the bodies of those who enter the Valley of Defilement. In his own way, Patches seems to trust us enough to encourage us to do some treasure hunting. His story essentially ends here, but there is one other note we'd like to make about the Hyena. He carries the Adjudicator's Shield, which is described as a large wooden shield that depicts a brightly colored scene of the deceased being judged. On the other side, an epigram is carved in old script, Cowardly acts and the eating of birds must not be the deeds of a hero of storms. If the one being judged displeases the adjudicator's master, the golden crow, the deceased soul will be gnawed upon until nothing but their bones remain. 
its user will recover HP a little at a time. I believe this shield was picked off a corpse at some point, because it seems to stand in direct contrast to who Patches the Hyena is. He is absolutely one for cowardly acts, and if the shield is to be believed, he would be gnawed on until nothing but bones remain. Not exactly a comforting thought for our friend here. It's likely he simply carries this shield due to its regenerative abilities. After all, a thief double-crossing so many may one day find himself in a fight, and if he did, it would help to be constantly refreshed. In the original Dark Souls, we encounter a Patches that's much more upfront with his disdain for the clergy, or as he refers to them in this game, clerics. When we first meet him in the catacombs, he says, Today, you look reasonably sane. What are you doing in the catacombs? You're a cleric or something. Okay. Well, that's strange. Oh, I know what it is. You've come for the trinkets, haven't you? Well, whatever it is, this place is treacherous. Do you watch your step. <laughs> If we tell him we're a cleric, he brushes us off and has clear disdain in his voice. Either way, he'll activate a bridge trap after we walk past, and should we make our way back to him, he says, Oh, well how are you then? I slipped and flipped that little voice. It didn't cause you any trouble, my chance. Are you certain? Well that's a fine shame, but I'm truly sorry. Really? But wait now. You didn't actually fall down, though. Well, why didn't you tell me sooner? All's well that ends well. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm not above it all, I swear. I am trusty patches. The one and only. I know. This should make up for it. We're on the same side. Undead outcome. Fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> we don't encounter patches again until the catacombs within the Tomb of Giants. Once we reach the catacombs, we can talk to our trusty friend. Well, you again? You again? Well, well. You've been a stranger. Been a stranger. Oh, good to see you well, mate. You well, All mate. right. You came at the perfect time. There's a fine stash of treasure right down that hole. I found it first, but we're friends now. I'll split it with you, in any case. Have a look. It'll shimmer you blind. <laughs> Take a guess at what happens next. Again, we can escape his traps and make our way back to Patches, where he's very surprised by our survival. Oh, oh you! I, I... Well, let's just calm down. Talk about things. I did you wrong, but I didn't mean it. These temptations, they can, well, overcome me. You know what I mean, don't you? Please, forgive me. You and me, we're... Jolly undead outcasts, aren't we? Oh, brilliant. A second chance. Wonderful. I had a feeling you'd understand. I did. But uh, if I were in your shoes, ooh, who knows what I'd have done. But now we're friends again. Eh? <laughs> Once again, after surviving the ordeals associated with befriending this man, he'll open up shop in our hub area, where he tells us, Oh, we meet again. How many of you are there? You've come at the perfect time. I'm done with the looting. I'm a humble merchant now. And wondrous treasures have I. At a special price for you. There you are. Have a nice look at them. Oh, relax. No more funny business out of me, my friend. From this point on, just as he does in Demon Souls, 
Patches will offer helpful advice about various characters in the world, telling us Lautric is dangerous and that Petrus is scum. When it comes to Lautric, we believe it's possible Patches was the one who trapped him in the first place, seeing the danger he posed. This would explain their mutual distaste for each other. Outside of his story, this Patches shop tells us a great deal about him. He sells us a wide variety of trinkets, but the most interesting in my opinion are the Cleric Set and Crescent Axe. All of these items are wielded by clerics of the Way of White, with the axe being bequeathed to cleric warriors that have proven their faith. It seems that Patches has dispatched a number of clerics and picked them clean for his store. One last note about trusty Patches. He carries the Eagle Shield, which, while not having any lore associated with it, does again associate Patches with birds. Up next we have a bit of an anomaly in this group of Patches. Mild-mannered Pate from Dark Souls 2. This interpretation of the character is a bit different than other incarnations, as he seems much more sincere in his exchanges with us, and is not voiced by our typical Patches voice actor. Pate claims to be a treasure hunter on our first meeting. Hello there. Traveling all alone in these treacherous times. Well, I hope you have a very good reason. Oh, hogwash. Who am I to judge? <laughs> My name is Pate. I journey hither and thither on a sort of treasure hunt, you might call it. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. Oh yes, you'd be cautious if you go any farther. There's treasure in there for certain, but the entrance locks from behind. I saw the same design earlier, and it's the same contraption, I'm sure. I was with this warrior, you see, and he insisted that he go inside first. <laughs> the rather brusque fellow tried to swipe the lid for himself, but it trapped him inside. I still have the gent's ring. I do hope he wasn't harmed. Not only does Pate tell us of this trap, he warns that a previous traveling companion had already fallen into it. He plants the seed of possible treasure, but unlike other versions of Patches, he outright tells us what will happen if we chase it. Should we make our way back to him after exploring the area, he says. Well, I see you managed to escape. I hope that brave warrior didn't come a cropper either. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. Oh, but you should take this. It allows undead to call out for help to one another across the fissures between worlds. With luck, somebody will lend you a hand. So not only does this version of Patches seem to have our best interest at heart, but he gives us the White Soapstone, the item most associated with cooperation throughout Dark Souls. We can encounter Pate again at the Earthen Peak where he says, Well, we meet again. There's treasure this way, but I have a bad feeling about it. I don't quite have the guts myself. We can then find the treasure, and he seems genuinely happy for us. Good to see that you survived. Perhaps you're more rugged than I thought. In any case, the treasure is yours, since you went ahead and took the leap. I prefer a more cautious approach. It's hard to know who to even trust these days. I've heard that a man's out for my life. 
The man Pate is referring to is Crichton the Wanderer, a knight we can find at the Huntsman's Copse. Who are you? I thought you were that bastard for a moment. You've set me free. Now I can find him. The cheeky prick. He won't know what hit him. I am Crichton of Mira. I travel from land to land to hone my blade. I've heard this land was full of danger. I thought it would suit me perfectly. I joined forces with a man on the way, but he was no more than a backstabbing knave. He took the first chance he had to try and off me. I decided to set a trap for him here. But then I got trapped myself. I can't believe that I was so dense. Stars that you came along. You be careful of him. Pate, I think he said. He wears this rather unusual ring. You know it when you see it. I've seen his type before. He kills entirely for the pleasure of it. I'm sure I won't be his last victim. The man's better off dead. He's a slick talker, so don't let him fool ya. Paint, the man with a strange ring. Watch out for the slimy rat. And don't you believe a word that he says. I'll find a common for a bed and put an end to his roguery. <laughs> Here we get our first look at who Mild Manor Pate may truly be. If Crichton is to be believed, Pate is a traitorous dog, willing to throw his companions away at the drop of a hat. However, Crichton is not necessarily the most trustworthy person either. His own armor tells us it was likely a finely crafted imitation of those worn by the Knights of Mira, meaning this man is not who he says he is. In fact, Kel the cartographer tells us he is from the land of Mira and that this land has an infamous killer who is a knight in name alone and managed to escape before his execution. He has also come across a man named Cray something who bears a striking resemblance to the killer. So it would seem Crichton himself is not exactly honest with us and is likely a mass murderer who was tricked by Pate. Ultimately, the quest line ends with Pate and Crichton exchanging blows, and we can choose whose side we want to be on. That of Pate, a man who has largely treated us well, but is likely a scoundrel. Or Crichton, a man we can reasonably assume to be a mass murderer in his homeland. No matter who we choose, the winner will provide us with a key to their secret stash of treasure. And regardless of our choice, this treasure has an explosive trap that will trigger once we open it. It seems no matter whose side we take, we are doomed to be betrayed. Chronologically, the next interpretation of Patches we encounter would be Patches the Spider in Bloodborne. This is clearly the most unique version of Patches found throughout From Software's catalog, with him taking the form of a literal giant spider. But we don't know that at first. The first time we encounter him, it's through the wall of a cottage. He never tells us his name, but he does say, A hunter of beasts are you? Glory be, you know not the value you possess. But what's the pity? The hours of the night are many, and the beasts more than I can count. A veritable hunt unending. Not even death offers solace, and the blood imbibes you. <laughs> A most frightful fate. Oh my. But I'm willing to do you a kindness. Step lightly round to the right of the great cathedral and seek an ancient shrouded church. The gift of the Godhead will grant you strength. Yes. I'm unquestionably certain. 
With this helpful information, we set out to find the shrouded church. Once we reached the area our helpful friend told us about, we are swept up in the arms of an amygdala, and we can hear his voice speaking to his god. From here we can again find patches, this time obscured behind a door in the lecture building. What a joy it is to behold the divine. It must be such a pleasure. You're in my debt, you know. You're nigh on a beast of the field. But here you are, treading a measure with the gods. <laughs> Are your feet as fat as your wits? Oh, cease this dithering. Take the plunge. Throw yourself to the wolves. We don't meet up with Patches again until we are exploring the Nightmare Frontier, where if we keep a close eye on our surroundings, we can finally see his true form. An enormous spider's body with the head of our favorite scoundrel. You can also fall into one of his classic traps while exploring the frontier. After this, we can face Patch's god, the Amygdala, and put an end to it. Upon returning to him, he's surprised by what we've done, and asks about your opinion of him. This cannot be. You cannot be. No, you didn't. Lord Amygdala? How did this come to pass? <laughs> now, wait just a moment. Do you think you love me? should think not. I shared with you a thing most secret. Now you witness to a miracle, and all the stronger for it. You should appreciate it if you've a grain of gratitude in you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> express what words cannot. Oh, doubt me not, sweet compere. What is friendship but a chance encounter? After this, Patches has no other role in the story of Bloodborne, but he will tell us that he plans on leaving soon, as we've killed his god and he must be off to find another. This is interesting considering Patch's penchant for hating clerics and aligning against the Divine. This Patches, depending on how you interpret his dialogue, seems to be aware that he exists across multiple realms. Depending on your reading of this quest, either Patches was consistently tricking us in order to lead us to our doom, which is absolutely in character, or he used us to kill a god he somehow found himself in service of. Possibly with the original intention of destroying it. Either way, Patches gets to walk away from Yarnum completely untethered due to our actions. In Dark Souls 3, we meet unbreakable Patches, possibly the most tricky incarnation of the character to date, as he's willing to go so far as to pretend to be someone else upon our first encounter. We meet him in the Cathedral of the Deep wearing the Katarina set, 
and he says, Well, you look reasonably sane. I am a knight of Katarina. I've managed to track down this cathedral's store of treasure. It's right over there, across that narrow part. Treasure? Hmm. Always so close, yet so far. I'm in quite a pickle, <laughs> indeed. Hmm. Hmm. Well, just hold your horses a moment. I know, I know. Treasure is so sorely tempting. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> If we try to cross the bridge to reach his most tempting treasure, we are treated to Patch's favorite trick. <laughs> Shame on you, you greedy guts! Thought you could outwit an onion! Well, say hello to the nice giant. He adores visitors. <laughs> As a fun note here, if you're playing a cleric, this dialogue is slightly different, as he'll call male characters a rotten cleric and female characters a rotten nun. Patches will also throw a fit if we've already defeated the giant before being kicked below. Once we escape his trap, we can encounter Patches again where he introduces himself and blames his behavior on the armor he was wearing. Huh? Y yes hello oh, I don't believe we've met. I'm Patches. Unbreakable Patches. You seem to be unkindled. Do you have business with me? Ah, oh, oh yes, of course. It's coming back to me now. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was my hand, as you know. But, but the deed, well, that was the armor's doing. Regrettable, truly. But behold, I'm stripped clean of that unruly attire. Look at you. All's well that ends well, right? Yes, we'll be fine. I can tell. It's that rotten curse. It is. The untidy mess. <laughs> Now, it wasn't me, but, but, but you still deserve an apology. Just a little trinket. Go ahead. It's yours now. <laughs> you should know, I'm a kind of uh, travelling merchant. If you're as unkindled as you look, you'll find plenty of good stuff. After this, we don't encounter Patches again until exploring Firelink Shrine Tower where he locks us in. Another dirty trick in an attempt to gain trinkets for his shop. <laughs> Sorry, friend. Be more careful. By the gods, curiosity is gonna kill you, kittens. Some places are better left alone, you know. Oh, sorry. Am I a tad too late? <laughs> Have no fear. There's beauty in death. Besides, you're amongst your own. Plenty of company, right? <laughs> oh, no matter. I'll look after things. By stripping every last trinket off your corpse, you're gonna make some lucky customer very happy. <laughs> After escaping the tower, we can finally recruit Patches as a vendor within Firelink. You're alive! Now, hold your horses. Let's have a nice talk about this. Oh, come clean. I did you wrong. I didn't mean it, though. Not one bit. You, you get these urges, running the business and all, and, and I, oh, I, I hate myself for it. I do. You know what I mean. Terrible, really. 
but I can see you'll forgive me. You're alive, after all. And that's what counts, right? Oh, fantastic. A wily second chance. I, I knew you'd understand. I, I just knew it. The heart of a lion. A model for the rest of us. A true friend. Forever. Everything up until now is par for the course with Patches. But it's his development after this point that sets this version of the character apart from his other incarnations. There's another thief that can be recruited as a merchant in Dark Souls 3 known as Grey Rat. We can save him from his imprisonment, and after that point he'll go on scouting missions to add items to his shop for us. If we mention Grey Rat to Patches, we learn they actually have a history. It's during one of his expeditions for new stock that we can mention him again to Patches, where he actually shows concern for Grey Rat. Patches then does something extremely uncharacteristic. He goes out and saves Grey Rat. For whatever reason, Patches actually cares for someone other than himself, and it comes across as a truly selfless act. When asking us about Grey Rat, he comes across as if he's going to plunder his corpse, but it seems his intention is always to bring him back to the shrine safely. Apparently, a true friendship with Patches is possible, if you do him a good turn. Perhaps the relationships we built with him in other games truly are sincere by the end, even if it's impossible to tell. Much like previous games, Patches does not serve a purpose from this point on aside from acting as a merchant in Firelink Shrine. However, he does have another story upon entering the Ring City DLC. We first encounter a man going by the name of Lap when exploring the Dreg Heap, where he says, Look at you. You've got your head screwed on correct. Fantastic. To meet a kindred spirit on this God's forsaken crag. Call me Lap. I, I can't remember my real name, so let's just go with that. I have a feeling we're going to make a fabulous team. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. Oh, in all honesty, there's something I should tell you. I'm a hollow. Yes, I try to play it off. But I haven't a clue about my past, who I was, or what I lived for. Not even my own blessed name. That's why I've come here, searching for the Purging Monument. Said to be in the Ringed City, where the pygmies who found the Dark Soul at the Dawn of Fire reside. All I can say is, those little stones aren't doing much to help me remember anymore. <laughs> Well, that's the long and short of it. So if I completely forget who you are, don't be wroth with me. Come on, what else can I say? I'm a bloody hollow for heaven's sake. Next, we find Lap next to the first bonfire in the Earthen Peak. I know who you are. <laughs> Great to see you still in one piece. Come on, I can see why they call this the Dreg Heap at the World's End mangled remnants from every age and every land. It actually sort of lends credence to the old rumors that the ringed city rests below it all. Ah, uh, <laughs> don't mind me. You needn't worry yourself with this nonsense. I just wanted to tell someone. And I'm sick of old Humpty. I should stay quiet. Wait, I'll make it up to you by letting you in on a secret of sorts. Past here, you'll find the remains of a giant earthen tower, half submerged in a poisonous swamp. Not a very nice place to visit. Only, there's precious treasure in the thick of the swamp. I didn't have any use for it, you see. So, sorry, I, I left the whole package behind. If I get the chance, I, I could go fetch it for you. But if that's too long to wait, go nab it for yourself. I know who you are. A righteous warrior. Yes? With a solemn duty to boot. Well, grab that treasure. That's as good a duty as any. At this point, I'm sure we expect another classic Patches trap. But that's not what happens. 
We can actually rest multiple times, and Lap will be true to his word, getting the treasure for us. You remember that treasure? In the thick of the poison swamp? Well, I fetched it for you. As promised. Oh, it was only a hop and a skip. I needed a rest from old Nan over there. Here. Go ahead. It's yours. Maybe it'll help you with that solemn duty of yours. While it's true that we can't see his face, we all know Patch's voice well at this point, so we know who Lap truly is. But it's fascinating to see how he acts with none of his memories. Upon our third meeting, Lap has more to say about himself and his goals. Oh. Well, fancy meeting you here. A true blessing that we should seek the same place and find ourselves standing here together. I've got the last of my brew. Let's have our own little toast with it. To my search and to your duty and to the joy that lies before us. All right then, bottoms up. <laughs> now, I'm off in search of the purging monument. Once I find it, everything will come back to me. Who I was, what I lived for, what my name was, and what terrible grudges I held. I don't know. I just have this feeling that that's the kind of man I was. Oh, don't hold it against me. I only think I was. <laughs> After finding the purging monument, we can tell him where it is. Oh, and here we are again. How goes things? I'm rather running in circles, I'm afraid. I can't find the purging monument. And I've searched high and low. What if it was never here in the first place? Oh, bloody hell. What do I know? Are you certain of that? No. S sorry, I, I know you'd never lie to me. Thank you. Thank you kindly. I'll speed right on over. It won't be long now before I know everything. Who I was, what I lived for, and what my name was. And I'll have you to thank for it all. Ah, thank you. Most sincerely, I swear upon my birth name that I am your friend. No matter what might come out, no matter what I was, if you would do me the honor, allow me to be a true friend, always. Our final conversation with Lap comes after he's rediscovered who he truly is. Finally, you've come. Now I know exactly who I was. And for that, I've a little thanks to be giving. Go this way and peep past the broken staircase. Some awfully fine treasures just sitting there all alone. <laughs> It'll change your life. I've much to thank you for. So I'll say it again and again. Go this way and peep past the broken staircase. Some awfully fine treasures just sitting there all alone. What? Don't you believe me? He then pulls his most famous trick, kicking us to the land below. But this time around, it's not a long fall. Every age, it seems, is tainted by the greed of men. Rubbish to one such as I, devoid of all worldly wants. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way we are. I'll stick you in my prayers. A fine dark soul to you. This time around, Patches didn't kick us down a hole to trap us. He actually pushed us in the right direction. Perhaps it's because of the friendship we formed while he was suffering from amnesia. Or maybe it's because he sees the need for the cycle of the world to truly come to an end. Either way, his final appearance in Dark Souls has him acting not as a rogue, but as a cooperator, bidding you farewell and taking his leave.
Finally, we come to the most recent version of Patches in FromSoft lore. Elden Rings, Patches the Untethered. This version of Patches is first encountered at the end of Murkwater Cave, after we've made our way past a group of highwaymen bandits. Many points of his quest are easily missed due to the nature of Elden Ring's world, and it can be picked up in multiple places, but for the purpose of this video, we'll follow every variation in order. At the end of the cave, we find an open area with no one around. No boss to face or portal back to the entrance. Nothing but a chest. Upon trying to open it, a voice cries out. Thought you'd just help yourself to a man's personal belongings, huh? You scheming little thief. The gods demand repentance. Cough up your coin. All of it. And for the first time, Patches attacks us directly. It's a fairly easy fight, and after getting him down to around half health, he cries out. Wait, please! I surrender! White flag and all! For its sake, I concede! No one likes a bull-headed brute, you know! I yield! Yield! You, you can't harm a yielding man! Well, finally come round, have you? <laughs> I knew you would! You're a man of reason! Through and through! <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, what do you know? You're tarnished, like me. Now, now, how did I get that wrong? I took you for a demi-human or some such. <laughs> but an innocent mistake, I assure you. Well, water under the bridge. Now we're squared up. How about we play nice from now on? True man of reason. Just what I like about you. I'm Patches. Patches the untethered. Tarnished like you, only free-spirited. Nomadic, you might say. Only for now, those retired soldiers turned bandits. And uh, they're paying for my gruel. In exchange for my, well, showing them the ropes. But honestly, this looting racket is bloody terrifying. Frankly, I'm ready to wash my hands clean. Maybe set up a legitimate shop. So don't be a stranger. I'll be ready to wheel and deal come next time. <laughs> don't forget to pop back for another visit, friend. I'll be ready to wheel and deal come next time. We can revisit the area after this exchange and Patches will have his shop set up for us as well as offer more information about the bandits he was working with and the chest we tried to open. Well, nice of you to drop in, finally. It's all a bit ad hoc, but I'm sure you'll find something. And welcome to Patches Emporium, where you won't need a refund, because everything's top-notch. Yeah, I had those bandits make a clean break. Now they're all suppliers, and good ones at that. I mean, they don't understand a word I'm saying. But it hardly matters. We have a natural connection. <laughs> They're all foot soldiers. Survivors of a defeated army. Worked to the bone by their high and mighty lord. Only to be thrown out with the rubbish. <sighs> it's the same old story everywhere I go. <sighs> to hell with it all. Hmm. Wondering what's inside the treasure chest. Well, it's a... Nothing too special. Just something I'm saving as thanks for a very valuable customer. But then again, it would fetch some spectacular coin. And besides, this valuable customer could be a long time coming. Huh? Everything is give and take. Give and take. If we choose not to open the chest, we can visit again and Patches will bequeath its contents to us. You've really been there for me, through thick and thin. And so, I've made up my mind. I bequeath that chest to you. An extra special thanks for an extra special customer. What's wrong? I've made up my mind. The treasure chest is yours, in word and deed. Sure, it may be worth its weight in gold, 
But Apache's promise, well, that's priceless. We can then open the chest to trigger a trap that sends us to the Mistwood Ruins. <laughs> My sincerest gratitude. I thought I'd never wrench that thing open. You're the finest customer a man ever had. Upon returning to Patches, it's the same old song and dance we've come to expect from this character. How in blazes? You're alive! We had me proper scared puffing away in a flash like that. Who on earth spends their time booby-trapping treasure chests? No way I could have known. But still, I apologize. It's all very unfortunate. At any rate, it's nice just to see you safe. Don't miss all the bargains here at Patch's Emporium. Oh yes, but by the way, I'm saying goodbye to the old cave. I'm untethered by nature, and it's about time that I moved on. No worries. The old gang will inherit the shop. They may not speak a word, but they never forget a face. Spare them some coin after I'm gone, eh? Once we make our way to Liernia, we can encounter Patches again. He's excited to see us. It, it's been a long while. It's me, Patches the Untethered. I'm still in business, if you can believe it. Now I'm my only supplier. So I haven't got much, but everything here is top-notch. Patches Emporium, now open in Rhea Lucaria. We can ask him about Raya, and he'll show some sympathy for her plight. Hey, uh, have you met that girl Raya? She's a strange one, but I believe she was in need of help. Not that it's any of my business, but if she rings your bell, why not lend her an ear? He also offers us some advice on a way to reach the Erd Tree more quickly. Making your way to the Erd Tree, no? Well, I heard something that might help. A special means of reaching your destination. Have you ever seen an Iron Virgin? The clunky contraptions are whirlwinds of sickles and spiked wheels. But long ago, they were endowed with a spell of transposition. And get this. A surviving virgin sits at the bottom of the big water wheel in the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, its transpositional powers fully intact. So right, if you get caught in it on purpose, it'll chuck you out straight at the base of the Erd Tree. Or so I'm told. <laughs> As we all know by this point, the Iron Virgin does not take us to the base of the Erd Tree but to the Volcano Manor. Between this and his interest in having us help Raya, it's starting to seem like Patches isn't as untethered as he says. After escaping the manor, we can revisit Patches and he'll say, Fancy meeting you here. Hold on. Don't you say a word, my friend. I spoke no lie, not a one. You are trapped inside a volcano, no mistake. But the Erd Tree was right outside. You just had to spring yourself out. Well, I'm willing to admit, I could have been more clear. But I did not lie, and you're perfectly unscathed. All's well that ends well, right? He's not wrong, as his advice did land us closer to the Erd Tree. It seems as though this iteration of Patches, though he is fond of tricking us, may just be testing us for some grander purpose. If we speak to him on Mount Gelmir, another classic trap plays out. Oh, um, hello? Yes. Strange place for a chance encounter, eh? Huh? <laughs> I thought I could use a rest. Don't mind me. Go about your business. Right, over there. See that? Something shimmering. I swear. At this point, we all know what's coming. Personally, I was excited. Well, if you really are that gullible...
Then stay away from the Volcano Manor! <laughs> Bye now! Take care! Again, we can return to Patches after being duped, where he plays off kicking us as us taking a wrong step along the path. My. Well, here you are again. Oh, so sorry for that. I, I meant to warn you, but whoop! <laughs> there you went. Despite my best intentions, I've done you wrong. I have. But here you are. Standing tall and proud. All's well that ends well, eh? And my warning was spot on. You tell me different. Stay clear of Volcano Manor. End of discussion. I heard the brutes there hunt tarnished like animals. Of course, if we truly want to do everything there is to do in Elden Ring, we join the Volcano Manor regardless of Patch's warnings. And we can find him there, waiting outside of Lady Tanith's throne room. Joined the manor, huh? I don't believe it. Didn't think you had it in you. All good, though. We're on the same side now. We'll do good work together. Are you surprised that I belong to the Volcano Manor? I always hated the gibberish about Lost Grace and the laughable Two Fingers. I thought I could lend a hand in unmasking the charade. Not to mention, Tanith has always made me curious. I guess her master must really be something. Because she's pretty damn smug about it. Even after announcing her blasphemous ambitions, she still stands proud. I've never seen a woman quite like her. Again we see Patches taking interest in someone other than himself. He was perfectly willing to toss aside his bandit brethren, but when it comes to Tanith, and by extension Raya, he seems to have some deeper interest. After completing a request for the manor, Patches has one last trick to pull on us, getting our Tarnish to do his job for him. You here at the manor, but if you complete the request, you can improve your standing. Relax. We're old friends. Time's come to pass the torch, right? Go on, break a leg then. <laughs> Upon defeating our prey, we can report back to Patches, and he'll try to welch on giving you the reward for the contract. Hunted down Tragoth? Are you certain? No, it's quite alright. Fine work indeed. I'll give Tanith the news. Have some rest, by all means. <laughs> Sharper than you seem, aren't you? I was just holding on to it for you, you know. Here you go. The reward for hunting Tragoth. All yours. After this, Patches will remain at the manor with his shop until we're granted an audience with Rikard. Once we've defeated Rikard, Patches sees the writing on the wall and starts planning his exit. Now you've gone and killed Rikard. <laughs> you scheming little bastard. Cripes, you make this nonsense seem well <laughs> less nonsensical. Perhaps a Tarnished will be Elden Lord after all. But for now, this manor is finished. The demigod beast is slain, and Tanith has lost her head. A fine mess. But how else could it end? When Daddy Ambition's head over heels courting Lady Blasphemy. <laughs> well, here I am, untethered once again. Goodbye, my friend. This time, when he calls us his friend, he seems to really mean it, because this is not the end of his quest, and he will lean on us for help should we find him at the Shaded Castle. Oh, you, you, you again. A shame you had to see me like this. Oh, I, I had a bit of a slip up, that's all. I should have stuck to what I know best. No matter. I know I, I can trust you. Gullible, yes, but uh, a good soul. Make certain that Tanith gets this. Oh, it's, it's nothing, it's just... Makes me sick to see her all bent out of shape. Come on, Tanith, back on your high horse where you belong. 
You're able then? Then I can rest easy, my friend. In an uncharacteristic turn of events, Patches seems to have gotten himself injured reclaiming Tanith's castanets. It seems as though his admiration had turned to true affection, and Patches the Untethered actually put his life on the line for the sake of someone else. Depending on how you started his quest, this could be the last time you meet Patches, but if you did some of the steps out of order and never actually found him in the Murkwater Cave, it's actually possible to go back there after this point and play that portion of his quest line, complete with unique dialogue, where Patches acknowledges your history. And now we come to a point where I actually had to re-record some of my audio for this lore dive, because I had thought that you can only get some specific dialogue back at the Murkwater Cave if you hadn't initially done it at the beginning of Patch's quest. But as it turns out, you can revisit the cave after receiving Tanith's castanets, and it turns out, Patches is alive and well. In this way, we know for sure that Patches does survive our meeting in the Shaded Castle, and perhaps he can have a role to play in the upcoming DLC. The Patches of Elden Ring draws much more of his character from the Patches of Dark Souls 3 after living for a time as Lap. He's clearly a scheming thief willing to throw us under the bus to make a quick buck, but at the same time, he shows interest in others to the point of actual dedication. His disdain for the Two Fingers and Grace calls back to his hatred for clerics and holy people in previous games. It seems no matter where or when Patches is, he believes that dogma and those who follow it are not to be trusted. Better to place your trust in yourself, in those you know you can swindle, and, occasionally, on those who prove they can be relied on as a friend or ally. In Elden Ring, Patches claims to be untethered, but it seems like he's never been so well connected to those around him. As a fun aside, Patches seems to have wormed his way into another Souls-like that's gotten a lot of attention lately. In Lies of P, we can decrypt the old cryptic vessel to learn the following story. Order, an old shack in the tomb slums in Malum District. Look for the bleak tree and laundry line and enter the shack next to them. Appendix, an agreement is attached for mutual trust. I kept hiding the stolen goods in the barren swamp and realized something. Ah. I'm never going to return if I keep going to the swamp. All I've known is the life of a thief, but I don't want to die now, so we're returning to our sweet home. Even if the Black Rabbit Brotherhood is making trouble, we were technically before them in the Malum District. In the slums, you follow the slum rules. First, bring the stolen goods to our old base. We may be dumb, but we're loyal, unlike the rich. Here's to a lifelong friendship. This leads us to the old shack mentioned in the Order, where a man with a large nose stands outside. He says he wants nothing to do with the robbers and their dealings, and gives us a key to their shack, where the treasure waits inside. Upon entering the shack, the following scene plays out. Ah, you got four! Serves you right for being greedy! Love watching people fall into a trap! Never gets old! From across universes, it seems Patches got us again with one of his favorite tricks. What makes this even better is that there's alternate dialogue for if we see this coming, where he complains about our foresight. This whole interaction is an amazing way for Liza P to pay homage to FromSoft and our favorite lovable scamp. So we've explored every story of Patches throughout FromSoft history, but the question stands, what exactly is Patches? Does he exist as a simple narrative device to create cohesion between the games? Is he a fun easter egg we can all look forward to whenever we start up the latest game from this developer? Or is there something more? 
On multiple occasions, Patcha seems to have a deeper understanding of the world around him, and of us as a character, than he probably should. Is it possible that Patches is the single link between all From Software titles in a more literal sense? Patches may be a traveler between time and dimensions, and this would be a good explanation for his outlook on the worlds he inhabits. He finds himself eternally trapped in cycles, whether they be related to the souls of demons, kindling, or death and rebirth. If there's one thing Patches has come to see, world after world after world, it's that greed is the driving factor of mankind, and he's taken it upon himself to punish us for our greed. Time and again, game after game, for as long as we enjoy the games of From Software. Or he really is just a fun easter egg. Either way, I'm happy he's always here. Except for Sekiro. What happened there? I know we sort of have a merchant equivalent, but not really. He ain't no patches. Thanks for joining us as we shared the stories of every iteration of Patches throughout the Soulsborne universe. If you have any questions about the man himself, please let us know in the comments, as we think this is going to be a fun one to speak with our community about. Thank you again for helping us reach our 100th episode. We will never be able to express how thankful we are for all of the support you've given us since the beginning of this series, and we hope you'll stick with us in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.